Okay. Hi, welcome back to my channel, Maggie and Data. My name is Maggie. I recently graduated from the University of Toronto with a double major in human geography and statistics. I currently work as a data scientist at a startup in the logistics space. And if you're new here, make sure to check out my Instagram account at Maggie and Data, where I share daily data science content. And let's get started. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how I broke into tech and how I became a data scientist, my educational background, all the little jobs that I've had all the way leading up to this point. This is actually one of the most requested videos on Instagram. So I'm really excited to be finally sitting down and talk to you guys about this. Whether you're a student who is interested in data science, or if you're more of a seasoned professional who have been working for a couple of years and are looking to pivot in your career, I hope you find this video helpful in guiding you to find your path to break into data science and break into tech. My story started in September 2017 when I moved from California to Toronto to start school. So the way U of T work is that you don't have to choose a major in your first year. I was admitted under the stream of physical and mathematical science, but it didn't mean anything. What you do have to do is to plan ahead so you can take all the prerequisite courses that's required for your majors by the time end of the first year comes when you have to choose your major. Going to my first year, I thought I was going to double major in psychology and actuarial science. Psychology is just something I've always been interested in, um, the way people think. As for actuarial science, I was really good at math in high school. and. Given the influence of my Asian parents, they say, why not do something with math if you're good at math? And I didn't want to do pure math, so I decided on actual science. At the time, I thought it was so cool to work in the insurance industry where you get to tell someone how much they have to pay for their insurance based on data and analytics. But none of those majors work out for me because I actually got 52 in my first year calculus and linear algebra courses. 50s, 50s passing in Canada, so I was good. I was good there, but um, there was a requirement to get into the major, so obviously I didn't pass the, the line or it was 70 or something that you have to get to be able to um, pursue this stream at U of T, and I failed miserably. Anyways, more of the story is you don't have to be good at math in your first year to become a data scientist. And as for psychology, um, I don't know what your experiences are with first year psychology courses, but they're actually very, very dry. You are tested entirely on memorization, whether you remember a term very well or it just wasn't, it blew it for me. I was, I wasn't interested in anymore. Maybe if I stayed the course, I would have thought about it differently, but you never know. At the time, I also took a course called Urban Lives. Urban City Lives? City? Okay, I don't remember the course name anymore. It was taught by Urban Planner at the city of Toronto. In that course, we were taught all kinds of social issues, which I always had an interest in. So we're taught about gentrification, urban segregation, affordable housing, and all those issues that are very relatable in your day-to-day -day life. And so I immediately took an interest in it and I looked into the course code, which is GGR. Um, and I found this whole new stream called Human Geography, which I've never heard before. It's essentially a stream that prepares you for urban planning career. And I was looking at all the courses under that major and I couldn't decide on which one to take because I can't possibly take all the courses that I wanted to or I was interested in before graduation. And that's when I know that that was the major for me. And I ended up stumbling onto Statistics as my other major was because at the time stats department didn't have a great cutoff for incoming students. I do believe there is a great cutoff now, so I wouldn't have gotten in. Um, and at the time when I was picking my major, data science wasn't an option at all. It's very new and it was only added, I think, two years ago as a major. Overall, I was very lost in my first year. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I explored a lot. I remember going to networking events and I was pressured to go to networking events because everybody went to networking events in their first year at U of T. Um, so yeah, I felt pressured. But I was grabbing flyers from every single booth. I was trying to talk to every single representative from different companies just because I didn't know what I wanted. I guess when you don't know what you want to do, the possibilities are endless. 
But I also learned the hard way going to networking events that nobody wants first years as interns. There are so many better candidates who are upper years and are in the same pool competing with you. And it makes sense now because when I was in my upper year, I understood I knew what I didn't know in my first year. But I didn't know in my first year, so I was very upset I didn't get an internship. I really only got my first paid job in my second year, and that was an on- on-campus position. I was working on this job called Transcription and Data Analysis Assistant. I thought it was going to be quantitative data analysis because what the title was called, but it really was qualitative assistance, and I did a lot of transcriptions from people's interviews. During that period of time, I don't think the technology was there yet. There wasn't any like note takers, um, AI note takers who help you transcribe those things. You actually have to listen to the audio and type in a Word document as you listen to other people's interviews. Even though the job was not at all what I thought it was going to be, I did learn a lot about design thinking. I learned a lot about surveying people. I was actually on a team to give the execs at U of T recommendations on how they can improve student life better. Yeah, powerful stuff, right? And I wouldn't have gotten my real first data gig if it wasn't for this job. So my real first data job was um, as a geospatial researcher at a local hospital. So that second year of my university, um, it's also when I was introduced to GIS, Geographic Information System. This job, they were looking for someone to do some geocoding, which means literally turning a string of address into latitude and longitude and a point on the map. So it was very tedious data entry work. My entire summer was spent trying to correct addresses in India and to put them in the correct places. So for example, separating a entire address into street number, street, city, province, country, etc. It was very tedious for sure, but I was working in an office with a lot of PhD students in statistics and professors in statistics, and I think it really helped foster an environment where I, even though what I was doing was tedious, but what they were doing were not, and I was immersed in their work as well, just being in an office environment. Because I've proven myself trustworthy through the tedious data work in my first semester. They actually ended up asking me to stay for another year where I really got to develop my relationships with the people in the office. And I took a class from my PI, principal investigator in the office. I took a class with him at U of T because he's also a prof at U of T. I got a research grant with him doing some independent research. And towards the end of my experience, I was actually doing Bayesian analysis all on my own and doing spatial statistics. I was working on a project with masters of data science students at UBC, where I was the one driving the analysis to see how COVID has affected nursing home differently in Canada. So that was kind of my main experience um, in school working with data. I did ended up working there for an entire two years up to the point where I graduated. And I did have a lot of other experiences here and there as well. I worked as a crime analyst intern with uh, Toronto Police Service. I also worked a lot of research positions while I'm on campus where I got to develop a lot of pretty good relationships with professors. Um, and that's very important because when I graduated during COVID, I graduated in um, April, 2021, the job market was really not great. It was already hard trying to break into data science without a master or PhD and the COVID lockdown economic downturn definitely didn't help, didn't help with that. I remember applying to hundreds of jobs and I heard back from 20 of them, but none of them led to anywhere. And that's when I started developing my data science portfolio. I don't remember where I first heard it from, but I know I went to a lot of kind of online career events hosted by my university. And I just kept hearing the advice to start one. I packaged a lot of my school projects and some of my passion projects into a website uh, that I posted on GitHub, hosted through Netlify. It was a very intense month of just writing, uh, coding my website. While I was doing all of these on the side, I heard from an old connection that a prof was actually looking for someone to do spatial analysis work for a research paper. This is where the good connections came in handy because it was a temporary paid position that allowed me to look for a permanent 
solutions on the side while being paid and doing something interesting. As soon as my website is up and running, I started to hear back from some companies. A lot of them were actually looking for GIS analyst positions. And at the time, I knew very clearly that for something permanent, I would want to work at a larger scale with big data. So that's not what I was looking for. And so I did end up turning down a few of them. I ended up working as data engineer intern. Um, and I know what it sounds like to do an internship after you've graduated in, in Asian language, you could, you could call it lose face. Um, but that was what made sense to me at the time. And they did promise a full-time position if everything goes well at the end of my five months with them. It didn't go very well. So I should have seen it as a red flag when the recruiter was telling me this is a half data scientist, half data engineering position. It's never good when there is no clear job descriptions on what you'll be working on. Although I did learn a lot about AWS, cloud computing, Apache Spark, I knew I didn't want to stay. Luckily, because of my online presence through LinkedIn and through my personal portfolio projects, I was reached out by a recruiter for my current position. Went through the process with them. I didn't have to apply. I had two rounds of interviews, one with a hiring manager, which is my current manager, and the other one was with the CEO of the company. It was a very straightforward, very fast process. And when I knew that this was going to be the job that I really, really wanted was when my manager actually saw me for who I am before I did, if that makes sense. He saw and appreciated my geospatial data science capabilities, and he saw opportunities for me to learn more about machine learning, to be able to apply them for business problems. I've been working at this company for more than six months now as a data scientist, and I couldn't be happier. I really, really enjoy the team. It's consisted of six 20 years old um, data scientists and product manager, and this is the best first job that I could have never dreamed of. Okay guys, so that is my journey leading up to this point, becoming a data scientist, breaking into tech. The moral of the story is take a chance at an opportunity, especially if you have no previous experience. My first job was not data related. It was not a data scientist position. It wasn't even a data scientist intern position, but it was a lot of the little small steps that led to the job that I ended up getting today. And once you have a bit more experience, you can always then pivot and decide if the opportunity is the right one for you. Another lesson I've learned is that applying to jobs is a numbers game. You really just have to keep applying. It's really hard. It's hard for anyone. It's hard whether you're a bachelor's degree, whether you have a master or even you have a PhD, it's still hard to get a date. So just keep on applying. You're almost there. Celebrate your small wins. Getting an interview is a small win, whether you end up getting a job or not. What's most important is that you're working towards your goal, even if it's one step at a time. And another thing is that networking and online presence are so important in this industry. I have been chatting with my manager about why, you know, why me? Um, and he did mention that I had a really good resume with a lot of experience on them, even though they weren't full-time experiences position. And I had a really, really good portfolio website and that made a huge difference. And I didn't mention a lot of the jobs before my current position was through networking actually most of them I got through networking. It was either cold email, LinkedIn messages, or just kind of reaching out to people in general at networking opportunities. I'll make another video just on how to network and send out cold emails. But I hope this video was helpful to you and leave any questions that you have in the comment below. If you're new here, make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.